Batman and Robin and Batman v Superman are superior to Nolan shit. Complete Nolan garbage. For opposite reasons, for many different reasons actually. Um, Batman v Superman is ahead of his time. While Batman and Robin is kind of like a classic product of a bygone era, but it's faithful to the comics. Unlike Nolan shit. I'll put a link. To, I think I did a video about this years and eons ago. There's a site called Batman Online which talks about a lot of the stuff they took that Batman and Robin took directly from the comic books. Directly from comic books. Certain storylines, arcs, and everything. People like to talk uh, all this shit saying, oh no, it's for nostalgia. It's not just about nostalgia. It's about Batman and Robin resembles the comic book. Batman v Superman resembles the comic book. Batman and Robin, it was more of a fun era of the comic book. Batman v Superman, a darker era. That's why Burton and Schumacher's movies fit so well with Batman v Superman because Batman v Superman is a veteran Batman. 20 something years. Been through it all. Had uh, Dick Grayson. Now it's been confirmed 100% by WB that the dead Robin was Jason Todd. So he's been through the gamut. So you can imagine. And Batman Forever. Bruce Wayne mentioned Metropolis. Batman and Robin. Batman actually mentioned uh, the existence of Superman. So yes. And, like I said, Schumacher respected the visuals of the comic, and he was taken from a Dick Sprang early era of the Batman comics. You, you know what's funny? Nolan, everybody talks about Nolan, Nolan's movies are shit. They claim that he took from A Man Who Falls, but you know who wrote A Man Who Falls? Sam Hamm, the writer of Batman 89, wrote The Man Who Falls. Last time I checked, The Man Who Falls... Uh, in the comic, Ra's al Ghul was in Ducard. Ra's al Ghul didn't fucking train Batman, so I don't know what the fuck he took from the comic. He took little minuscule garbage, but Nolan shit is garbage. Batman v Superman is it? It only connects so well. I mean, Batman and Robin connects so well with uh, Batman v Superman because it feels like it's in the in Batman's past, and Batman v Superman is what happened to him now in the present. But yeah, yeah, there's so many. I'll, I'll put a clip. Trust me. Silver Nemesis. The storyline about Alfred's sickness, yet another element adapted from Detective Comics number 373. In the comic, it is Aunt Harriet who's sick. Her condition can only be cured by the use of a rare cryosurgical instrument which operates on the same principle as Mr. Freeze's gun, but this breaks when the doctors try to operate and Bruce are di and Dick are told that Aunt Harriet will die unless they find a replacement device. Moving on to Poison Ivy now. The version in this movie is pretty accurate to the comics and seemingly takes her cues from Ivy's first few appearances in the 60s as well as a story arc from the early 80s. Neil, Neil Gaiman's Black Orchid 1989 revealed that Ivy became the way she is after being experimented on her on by her college teacher Jason Woodrow, aka Floronic Man. Jason Woodrow in the movie, John Glover. Uh, in the movie, she makes her public debut at a charity auction. Batman and Robin were constantly attending these kind of social events in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Bygone era? Uh, here's an example from Batman's Marriage Trap. Batman issue 214, August 1969. In this scene, Batman and Robin attend a beauty contest where the winning girl gets a date with Batman himself. It's the kind of media-friendly antics the darker Batman would never indulge, but the 60s Batman was only too happy to go along with. Um, so when po Poison Ivy first appeared in Beware of Poison Ivy, Batman issue 181, June 1966, she made her debut at a weird pop art display showcasing models with peculiar names. Ivy shows up upstage other woman, introducing herself as the most beautiful of them all. Batman was instantly enamored with her and finds himself distracted to the point that it's impeding his work. This creates some friction between him and Robin, but in the comic, Batman is the one who becomes obsessed with Ivy while Robin is the one who tries to warn him. Batman punching a bad guy through a drum is a typical of wacky fight scenes from pre-crisis comics. Bruce Wayne is haunted by the memory of Ivy, he starts to hallucinate about her 
when he with his girlfriend. Batman encounters Ivy and offer bring these kind of obsessive associate uh, hallucinations. A good example will be Ivy's second appearance in the comics. In A Touch of Poison Ivy, Batman issue 183, August 1966. Bruce's girlfriend in the movie, Julie Madison in the comics. Julie Madison was an actress at Batman's as Batman's first girlfriend. She appeared in Batman vs. the Vampire, Detective Comics 31. Bane visually resembles his comic book counterpart. In A Sweet Kiss of Poison, Batman issue 339, Ivy disguises herself with a wig in order to maneuver the public without being recognized. Yes. Meanwhile, Barbara Gordon has discovered the Batcave. This scene, this scene seems to be another nod to Pepe Moreno's Batman Digital Justice. When the new Batman and Robin enter the old Batcave in this comic, they find a Max Headroom style computerized version of the original Batman talking to them through the Bat computer. Uh, like there's so much stuff. The confrontation between Ivy and the Batgirl in this movie showcases the former skills in unarmed combat. Combat. These two are evidence in Batman issue 344. Yes, going back to Batman 139, the first time Batgirl appeared in costume was when she came to the aid of Batman, Robin, and Batwoman. I'll put all the links, all of this, faithful to the comics. Nolan shit, Nolan just made shit up. He took minuscule shit that was maybe about a half a minute in the comic and made it. He, but the majority, Nolan just made shit up. Schumacher and, and uh, Snyder actually took stuff from the comics. I'll put the link. Fuck the haters. The haters are ignorant. It has nothing to do with nostalgia. It has to do with at least these movies were faithful to an era in the actual comics. Nolan just made shit up. And it was an emo, gritty, bullshit nonsense. Zack Snyder didn't just make shit up. He takes from the comics. The haters are fucking idiots. Go fuck yourselves. Batman v Superman rules, Batman and Robin rules. You're fucking ignorant and you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, the haters of this movie. Fuck you, John Schnepp. Fuck you, John Campia. Fuck all the haters. DC out.